Hi everybody, it's Danielle with Inspire Me to DIY and I just realized I didn't turn on any of my ring lights. But it's still, it's daylight so it still looks good and you know what, I think if I don't use them it won't show up so much on my glasses. The silly things that you think of as soon as you hit that little live button and then you go, oh, I didn't do this. It's just going to be one of those days because I have worked on this project for hours before I turned the live button on and I've made so many mistakes, it's crazy. But the good thing is, is now I know the right way to do it and I can show you the right way to do it. So I got all the blunders out of the way. Quick coffee break. Mm. My name is Danielle. I have a blog called Inspire Me to DIY. Inspire Me, the number two DIY. It is a home blog for um, home decorating, tips and tricks for ideas in your home, looks for less, how to decorate on a budget because aren't we all on a budget? I mean, even if you have a lot of money, you're still on a budget. So, but my budget is way different than that budget. So I try to decorate my home as cheaply as possible and to make it cute and actually look a little upscale. So today is one of those projects. What I am making is I found the sweetest paper mache books, and yeah, I already started on this one, from Hobby Lobby. This one was $1.50, and then I got a bigger one for $2. Yeah, I think it was, well, anyways, close to that. Hey, Sherry, how's it going? These paper mache books, okay, I've been to Hobby Lobby, I don't know how many times never saw these so whether they never carried them before or my eyeballs just never saw them I bought these and I think these are going to be adorable all decorated up oh there's a piece of paper stuck in there I was deciding on different papers because the turquoise and the blues that really go with my home but I screwed it up so much that I had to get extra paper out of my own stash to try to recreate this for you. I use Mod Podge to adhere everything on. What I'm gonna do with this one is I might put some sweet words down here and maybe stack my books, but I don't like the look of remote controls laying all over the place. I know that must be a girl thing because most guys, they don't care, but I do. So this is gonna be on my coffee table and it's gonna put my remote controls in there. It won't fit the big cable remote, but we don't have cable, so it fits our little Roku um, remote control just fine. So that's what I'm gonna use mine for. And I have, let's see if I can reach them, a whole bunch of stickers, um, letters, that I might put some words along the end to make it look like an actual book. See there? So, yeah, every, hey Carl, everything is kind of backwards, but, um, that's the way it is when you do a live. But the paper that I bought, let me show you. This was, oh, this is for the inside, or originally was for the inside of my box that I screwed up a little bit. And then this paper was originally for the outside. Doesn't that look like water? I love it, it's just this blue marble. But I cut it in completely wrong, so I can't use it. But I do have, this sweet flower. Look at that. It's like a greenish blue flower. And then on the inside, I might do the bird nest. So yeah, it's a little feminine, So, but my husband doesn't care. That's not a big deal to him. I already cut this one ahead of time because trust me, I was really nervous after screwing this one up about eight times. One thing that will make your paper cutting a little easier is I bought this, it's a Furbon, F-I-R-B-O-N, paper cutter. And it was under $10, and trust me, this baby's amazing. I have bought extra blades that I've replaced a number of times, but I can't cut a straight edge to <coughs> save my life. It's a car, Carl. <coughs> Carl, come here. <coughs> it's real in, inside here all the time. Come on, you want to go outside? For a moment. Come on. You guys stop the barking all the time. Come 
my goodness. I'm sure it was some leaves blowing in the yard. Silly dog. Okay, so I cut mine ahead of time. I did not do the inside of this one. So I think we'll do the inside of this one and the outside of this one and make them together. Oh yeah, he's barking like crazy. Now I only did the inside on, the, on here. I think I'm gonna paint this because me cutting all those, those uh, angles and stuff, I'm not good at it. So I think I'm just gonna paint it. I figure that way it will actually look good. Oh my goodness, he is barking his full head off out there. Now he didn't bark all day, of course. Let me trim some of my reds. For my edge around here, just to make it look a little bit like the edges of paper, I found this burlap uh, ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And it, I did both of the books with that. So they will have that in common when you have them stacked. So they look a little cute. And let's see, this with this is not going to look too bad. It's really got a lot of the same colors in it. I was so lucky to have this in my stash. What I did is I laid my book out. Now I'm going to see, I'm going to probably turn this a little bit so you can see it a little better. Let's see how I do. Maybe. How's that? Okay, I laid my paper out, put my book on top closed. You're going to want to fit everything, and this is where I went wrong. You're going to want to fit everything around that closed. Now you're going to hold it and then turn it over so everything lines up, fold the edges in. And I would cut a good half inch outside the book. Let me show you what I mean. Fold this out. So if I lay this down here, I want at least a half inch around the edges. What do you think? Like that. So then when you, and then I cut the little angle out here, just a right angle. So when you flip it, let's see if I can flip that and then flip that in, it'll go nice all the way around. Let's see, there we go. And kind of cover up your, your inside paper a little bit. Everything is going to be Mod Podged, so you don't need any other glue other than that. I'm gonna turn my little fan on because I'm sweating. I'm gonna bring the whole camera down and around. So maybe, how's that? Looks good, okay. I'm gonna turn my fan off because that's gonna dry out my glue. I am gonna start just on the one end. And I put this paper in first because that way it won't stick out when you close the book like it does right there because this paper is going to be covering over it. So I did have some forethought on that. Trust me, you should have seen the mess I was making just trying to get this right. I was even wondering if I was going to come on today. Okay, so the Mod Podge, I shook it up pretty good and I'm going to use one of my old beat up brushes. I like the flat, so I can turn that a little bit. I like the flat, um, brushes because they give you a more even coating. And this is an old, old brush. I don't care if I mess it up with glue, but I'm real careful about cleaning the glue off my brushes before it dries because otherwise you're just like pulling and pulling trying to get that clean. I put the glue on my book. I did not put the glue on my paper because when I get it all glued together, I'm going to put glue on top of the paper like I did here. So the whole glue will be on top just to give it a coating. This is a matte finish, but you, this is a matte finish, but you can um, buy it in the gloss. You also can buy it in waterproof. They have so many formulas now that it's, it's amazing. I used to use equal parts of glue and water and that works really well, but with all these different formulas, this is pretty awesome. And you, you're probably going to need the bigger bottle for this because I used a lot of glue on this, especially with the ribbon going around the edge. And I still have to trim some of that, you can see. it's. But once you get it glued down really good, you can 
You can trim it then. I wouldn't trim it before. There we go. Those little strings are bugging me. But see, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's do the glue on a book. And I, I used quite a bit of glue already. No rhyme or reason to this. Just, just put it on all the way to the edge. And I'm not going to do the underside yet. I'll do that once I get this stuck on. I'll show you what I mean. All right. And I'm just going to kind of not go around the back of the book yet. I'll do that. Just I'm just going to go like part way. Just to adhere it down. There we go. Now, I have used a foam brush to do this, but I wouldn't suggest it because it leaves bubbles. I don't know why, but when, um, you could do use it for this part, but when you use it to put the coating over the top of the paper, I just would not do it because of the, the bubbles that it leaves. All right, so I'm gonna push this down over my folds, make sure I have it lined up good. And you've got a little bit of forgiveness here. So just fold that in so it's tight. And then, there we go. And then I'm gonna flip it and make sure that all of my bumps and lumps and all that are out. I was, I had so much glue trying to figure this out. My fingers were even stuck together. So it was, it was crazy. Something so simple you think it would be, but boy, the measuring. The measuring was, was crazy, and the little the little measurer that I used, the little ruler, which of course I can't find. Oh, here it is. It was just one of those plastic ones, and I'm not sure how accurate it is, because when I mapped it out and then I used the measure grids on here, I didn't do so well. This little baby, while we're waiting for that to dry, oops does angles and everything. Look at this. For for under $10. I got it on Amazon. It's amazing. Remember the paper cutters with the arms? You put all the paper in and then you put the arm down and it's kind of smooshed the paper and it wasn't an even cut and that's what I grew up with. So when I saw this little plastic thing, I thought, yeah, I wonder how good that is. It is amazing. Especially with buying all the extra blades, because I've used a lot of different blades. Okay, so let's do, now that that is pushed on there good, let's do the back. And you, oh, guess, guess who wants in now? I went in, I went out, I went in, I went out. Okay, and I'm putting that on there. And again, I'm rolling it over that. Because I wasn't doing that before, I was just trying to measure it, and I was coming up short every time because of the arch of this. I was not getting it right. Oh, you decided to lay down out there. Well, maybe I can, it can buy me a few minutes before having to get up and take care of the dog. Poor Carl's getting old, so he has to go outside and go potty a lot. Okay. Oh, that's, I really, you know, maybe there's a blessing that I screwed up that other paper because this is a really sweet little book. Now, this would be really cute in a little girl's room also because she can put all of her trinkets and fabulous things. You could also, and they have paper for everything, so they also have like Marvel um, comics and dinosaurs and all sorts of stuff. So you could make one of these for a little boy also. Just some place to stash his belongings. Because every little kiddo that I know has special belongings that are just... And you know, it, you know with little boys, it's rocks and, and sticks. And little girls, it's fancy hair bows and all sorts of stuff. Okay. So that's pretty glued around there. Now all I have to do is the back. Oh yeah, it glued all the way to there. Can you see that okay? And this was double-sided paper, so I could have used that side if I wanted, but I like the flower. I'm gonna make sure I get some right in that crease. Right there. 
I love it. It's so cute. Now I painted um, the inside around the edge because I didn't think I was going to cover it with paper, but then I found a way to do it easier by doing the measurement all the way around of another half inch. So it's painted just in case it doesn't um, go all the way around. This book here was a little difficult because um, the 12 by 12 paper just barely made it to the edge. So I had to put a little extra edge right here so you can see that the end there is painted. So I kind of had to do that so you really wouldn't see it because it wouldn't wrap around. It was just too big for 12 by 12 paper, which I think is the biggest that scrapbook paper comes in. Okay, I'm going to roll this around and again make sure all my lumps and bumps are out. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because I'm thinking of all the mistakes I made. I started on this project at 9 o'clock. I made so many mistakes. I'm so glad I did it ahead of time because, wow, coffee break. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm a huge coffee fan. And it's not just because of the caffeine, because tea and all that, I, I don't mind, mind tea. And in fact, um, in most restaurants, if we go out for breakfast, I'll get hot tea because I like my coffee a little on the weak side and nobody makes it that way. Okay, what I'm doing here is you can see that I've got a little too much paper right there. So I'm kind of making a crease and I'm, I'm gonna try my best to cut along that crease with my scissors because since I already have this glued down, there's no way, glued down here, there's no way I'm gonna be able to put that through the cutter. All right, with my paper cutting scissors, not my fabric scissors, trust me, huge difference. <laughs> It's so funny, I can't talk and cut at the same time. Maybe I need occupational therapy. <laughs> okay, that's pretty darn close. See it in there? Isn't that cute? With that ribbon going around. And you could even do a really pretty flowered ribbon or, um, you know, masculine, just a like a red with a Marvel comic. I keep going to that. I dressed really colorful today. I hope you guys noticed <laughs> because uh, summer is coming and I'm so excited. Okay, so now I have that paper in there and it, some of the blue in there really matches this well. I originally put this in for the other paper, so it's uh, not a perfect match. So it was gonna be for that paper, which I thought would have been really pretty. And I have enough of this left that I'm definitely going to use it for other stuff. That's the beauty of scrap paper, is you, you always uh, can piecemeal it to where you can use it for a lot of different things. All right, so let's put a little glue. Now, bending around this curve, I, I cut some, let's see if I can fold it out. I, I cut it a little bit so it would lay in there better. I don't know if you can see that. See how I, I cut little things in there and in fact I probably should cut this one again because it's too big you want it to be able to lay around your curve so kind of cut it like that is that better it's so hard to get it so you can see it on the camera just right okay I'm going to use a smaller flat brush this was my big one I'm gonna use a smaller to go around that edge. It's just easier. This is one of my nicer brushes, so I do have to make sure that I clean it right away. I'm just gonna pull some of this into my cap. There we go. And I'm gonna go all the way around and do this all at once. I know, Carl. So. 
silly dog. I wondered how he was going to behave today because Daddy's not here. And so now he's just going to try to be the biggest booger he can. Okay, so I'm going to fold that around and really hold it and fold that around. So all I have left is the curve. And then just kind of push that in so it all fits together. And then just kind of, kind of squeeze it around. Got a lot of glue in, in there. There we go. So that is all the way around like that. And I have cut Cut these in the corner. Let me show you on this one. What I let me show you on another piece of paper. So what I do is if I'm going to fold this one in, this end, and then I'm also going to fold this end in, and I'm only going to do it over here. Okay. So then when I this is too much bulk in the corner, and it's going to show. So what I do is I open that up and I only cut it to my fold, this fold right here, and then I open this one up. Wait a minute, did I just do that wrong? I just did that wrong, don't, don't listen to me. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it on this one, wow, it's just a day. It is a day. And then I'm gonna cut it here. So, it's, right where this fold is and right where this fold is. So, and luckily if you do cut it there, it's not a problem because you can glue it back together. But now there's a lot less bulk in the corner. And I learned that more with sewing than I did with the paper. That you just make sure you wanna cut it like that at a right angle. So that's what I did on here. Okay, so this one is glued, let's glue this side. I'm going to try to go live as much as I can this week because I'm not working at the school because the school is closed for the summer. So I'm going to try to do as many lives as I can, be, number one, because they're really fun and I miss you guys, and number two, because I get to do crafts all the time, which makes me happy. Okay, so I'm going to fold that in, leaving this, this one out. I'm going to fold it in, I'm going to fold it in, all of it, close it, so then I can work on my corner. So it's just folding it in. There we go. And see that glob of glue right there? That's okay. Just smooth it out a little bit. It will all be clear when it dries. The beauty of Mod Podge. Okay, and I'm just going to let that... I dry a little bit. I don't know, I think I made that mistake on purpose. I mean, I didn't make it on purpose, but I think God made it into a beautiful thing because I like this paper way, way more than I do the other. And here, I, this is stuff I had in my stash. The other paper I bought yesterday because I was coming up with ideas at Hobby Lobby, which trust me, I can go up and down the aisles and go, oh, okay, I'm going to start that project, and I need things I'm going to make with this project. I'll have eight or nine projects running in my head. And before I know it, I've been to Hobby Lobby for two hours. I'm going to beat me a dog. Hold on. You need to stop barking. My goodness, come on in and sit down. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right, so I'm just going to do the ends. And then the glue one's all done. And then we, well, on the outside. Okay, roll that in. And I'll roll it from the center and work out. Okay. Aw, oh, cute. Cute, cute, cute. I see I have a little bit of a edge here. I'm just going to trim it. Maybe. There we go. That one looks good. All right, I'm just going to angle this one in just a little bit. And this one too. 
so that my corners, when I fold them in, will be a lot better. Okay, let's glue that one and then the outside of the gluing, just to put it together, is completed. Make sure you get the ends, get off of there really well. And I'm going to roll it from the center and work out to get my glue. If it's going to ooze out, I want to get it right away. Look at this. Is this not sweet? I'm going to paint the inside. Uh, maybe I've got a whole bunch of greens over here that I'm going to paint the inside with. Now you could put a cloth inside there, um, you know, and just like glue it in. That would be really sweet. With this one here, I'm gonna do some of the inside with that. And since I have, that's not that paper, where is it? Not that paper. This paper, since I have this extra paper, I think that's gonna be really cool with that really goes well. So I am going to, let's see, I'm going to cut the fold, the things I folded already and cut corners just so I don't have that. I want a nice clean rectangular cut. So I'm just going to put this in here. Come on, get in there. And line that up. It's going to give me a little problem. There we go. And line that up. Look how smooth that cuts. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to use the other end because it doesn't have those angles cut out of it. And that's about the perfect size. should be able to cut it right about where I creased it with my thumb. Watch me do it wrong again. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. That's really good. And I'm going right up to the edge. Hold on, let me get it right. To the edge of my lid or the top of my paper or book. So that's actually really cool. All right, let's do that. Let's glue that thing in there. And I am going to glue the paper instead of the book because I want to make sure I get all the edges of my paper. I'm going to put it up off my newspaper so I don't have sticky newspaper. More glue. More glue. All right. Once I get my edges done, then I can set my paper down. I just didn't want all of this to be glue because it's still my work surface. Okay, now I can set it down and do the in the middle part. And you see, I got a whole heck of a lot of glue on there. That's okay. Just so you can get all of the wrinkles out though. You know, it's kind of nice not having all those ring lights on. Those, those get really hot. Okay. Put it on there. Good. Oh, stop. All right. Now, I am going to use... What am I going to use to... Oh, I don't have to worry about it. I was going to use like a edge of a, a credit card or something to get the bubbles out, but there really aren't any. Look at that! Oh my gosh, it really goes with it. It's all water. So this is, a, my whole house is done coastal or nautical. Nautical, there's like bits and pieces of each. But this is going to go good in my living room. And I do not have enough to do the inside, so I will paint that. But look at the outside here. I love how that looks. So 
those two together. Those are not bad. That is not bad at all. Okay, well, let's, since I have a little bit of time, oh my goodness, it's only been a half hour, let's paint the inside. Oh, look at my crate over here. I found these little crates at Walmart. Look at that. are they cute? Now, this is all my paints, just my blues and greens, and I threw in a couple of whites in there. I don't know why the gray's in there. It should be with my other silvers. But let's try to find... Uh, a color that's close to to look in for that like the inside of that let's see what do you what do you think with with that paper it's nice I don't think it's close though let's try this one this one is aquamarine uh, that's a little better. I think I like this one better. So let's put the Acapulco away. I wanted to go with more of a blue or green. And I did not bring a paper towel out here. A paper towel, a paper plate out here to put my paint on. So I'm going to have to use it right out of the bottle. Why not? Everything else has been a little... A little fun today. Is it one of those where I'm testing to see if I'm going to lose my coal? Okay, yeah, I like this one. This is a number eight round. It's big enough that you can get all in there. Now, be careful not to paint your paper. I'm saying that for myself. I'm going to pour this in here. Oh, maybe. There it goes. Oh, it's a thick paint. There we go. All right. Well, at least I don't have to worry about what to hold on to because usually when I'm painting something, I paint up all the surfaces and then I have nothing to hold on to to finish. Look at that. Oh, that color is perfect. Okay. Let me get it right up there. How fun is this? I love doing stuff like this. This is way more fun than just about anything else I know. I'm not much of a TV watcher, but you could easily do something like this in front of the TV. That way you, you can be busy. And wouldn't these be great gifts for people? I mean, fun. I like giving homemade gifts at Christmas. I'm doing around the edge here just because I didn't want the brown paper to show. But I love giving homemade gifts for Christmas, especially if you know it's something they you know really love. I have a girlfriend that she loves everything boho and you know like 1960 hippie-ish. So it's so fun to make things for her. And she's a crafter herself, so she makes, she does a lot of stuff with beads. So I was talking with her today, and she's going to make me some sun catchers with glass beads. And I think that'll be so cool. I love stuff like that. I love homemade gifts from friends. All right. This is way easier than trying to match paper. <laughs> Look at that. It might need two coats, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe not. I like this color a lot. Well, you can tell I like this color a lot. If you look on my blog, you'll see a lot of my rooms. And they're all the turquoise and the navy blues and the oranges. That's why I say they're nautical and coastal, which before I didn't know there was a difference. Well, that's good. Good thing I got a paint on the blue. Nautical is more navy blues and ships and rope and you know anything that pertains to being on a large ship, where coastal is a lot of things being on the beach. So even though they go well together, they're two totally different things. I'm going to put a little bit of paint right there. Now I'm going to do the same thing 
Ta-da! Oh, I like it. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Why not? It's right here. i got to re-glue some of that. But my um, guest bathroom is completely nautical. It's uh, painted it all navy blue. I have a chair rail and a wainscoting at the bottom that I built, and that's bright white. I think it's called Simply White. But it's a high gloss because in a bathroom, you want surfaces that are easy to clean. So it's a, a high gloss. The top of the wall is all uh, navy blue, which the color is actually called Naval from Sherwin-Williams. And then I have a blue and white striped shower curtain. And I'm hoping to redo the countertop in there to look more like a marble. And I want to put brass fixtures on the, um, the sink basin. It's all builder grade stuff that came with the house. So it's the Formica and the, the ca uh, cabinets in there are like a really weird laminate. Just not real durable, although they've been, they came with the house and I think they were original to the house and this is, house was built in 1990 or 91. So they've lasted a long time. I really need a new countertop and new um, sink basin and everything in there, but that's a lot of money. If I can fix it up and make it look amazing for pennies, why wouldn't I want to try? If it doesn't work, then down the road I'm going to have to get new, but I at least want to try. My whole home, you know, if you know people that have been here, my home is really nice. It's all done DIY by me. Just easy, easy ways to upgrade your already home, builder grade home, or maybe it has been upgraded, but it's been since the 70s. Oh, I had that house too, trust me. Everything was avocado. In this house, everything is pink and, well, mauve and blue. So, look at that. Really? That's the kind of day I'm having. So, everything is definitely late 80s, early. Wow. Get in there. I'm trying to flip this so you can see it. There we go. Late 80s, early 90s. I'm just going to stick my hand right in it. So, I'm trying to unmauve or depink or whatever the house. They have these kits out. It's like a resin that you redo the countertop. And I've been reading a lot about that. And what I like about it is um, some of the, uh, what do you call it? The reviews, some of the reviews that I've seen, people have had, they've done it like seven, eight years ago and it still looks really great, perfect because I don't plan on remodeling again that bathroom anytime soon. And if that lasts that long, why wouldn't I want to try it? And I think the whole kit is like $45. So $45 to redo your countertop as opposed to, oh, a good thousand dollars for a new, a new countertop. If I'm going to put in a new countertop, it's going to be a stone. I would like a granite or quartz, but I want it to look like Carrera marble because I like the white. And I priced it, it's over a thousand dollars just for my guest bathroom. So for $45, why wouldn't I try? And I definitely will take uh, pictures of all the steps and do a tutorial on the blog. Here it is, da 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 da, completely painted. All I have to do now is um, Mod Podge the whole outside of both of them and they will be done. Oops, I shouldn't have closed that yet. It wasn't dry. <laughs> you know what? I, I need to throw some salt over my shoulder or whatever it is you do for good luck because dang, it's one of those days. There we go. 
So before I screw it up anymore, <laughs> let me flip this back up. Hey, there you are. Ta-da! Before I screw this up anymore, I'm going to leave it and let it dry. And I'm going to finish it out and then show everybody on the on Facebook and probably on my blog. Because I think I'm going to do maybe a ribbon or something around the back here. Or maybe just paint it and then do some words across there. Because I can't leave this go like this without doing words on it. I don't know why, but I just think it's really sweet. And you know, it, it could be like maybe Little Women or something because of this really feminine paper and this one could be maybe some beach inspired book or I don't know something but I'm gonna I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit now I bought this is a new thing for me and I guess it's a new thing for Hobby Lobby because they don't even have it a, a fermia oh shoot I listened to the video and everything on how to say it a fermia a femia anyways what it is is little pieces that look vintage that you can decorate with and the only thing I could find at Hobby Lobby were these book corners that I plan on gluing look at that they're like a they're copper looking I don't know if you can see the little design on there and they came with little tiny nails which I'm not going to use but I am going to maybe glue on the edge of my book Maybe even more on this one. Of course, they might be too big for this one. But I have seen pictures where... Oh, that is so cute. I think I might do that. Where they have done... Um, put little bits and pieces like this. Joy Fabrics has a whole bunch of the Affirmia. Affirmia. They have a whole bunch of it. I tried to look it up on Hobby Lobby and they don't have a clue. So it'll be coming. It'll be something that's real popular. But there it isn't right now. But it would be really neat to make this look kind of old and vintage and, and really cute. If you like this project, if you enjoyed watching me screw it up, or you enjoy making one of these, I would love to see the pictures if you made one of these. I want to see what papers you chose and what colors you chose for your insides. And how you're going to use it. That would be amazing. Just um, comment on this video and show me pictures if you decide to make it. If you really enjoyed watching me, hit the little follow at the top. If you already follow me, thank you so much. Because this is my little side hustle and I'm really hoping to make this business work. Because, y'all, it's so much fun. Why not enjoy what you're doing? And I'm loving this. So... Um, go to go on my blog, Inspire Me to DIY, the number two. Um, join my page, and you will get a newsletter once a week of everything that's up and coming and things that I've already done. And follow me on Facebook. I would love it. So hopefully I will see you. I have a project tomorrow that I want to try. So I'm going to go live tomorrow. Don't know the time. I'll let you know ahead of time, at least an hour ahead of time. Have a great day. It's Saturday. Enjoy yourself. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye.